Morning everyone, so uh, I think I said it was day 167 yesterday in the GGR, but it's actually day 166 today, so uh, I can't remember, but I just looked at and Jane and I just had a little bit of a, huh? Anyway, uh, Saturday morning, hope you're having a good weekend. This will get up a little bit later than uh, we had hoped, but anyway, it'll get up shortly. Uh, so we'll also be seeing this live and it'll probably be about uh, quarter past nine or 20 past nine. So uh, before we get into it, it's the weekend, we can talk about a few other things. Um, I just want to uh, summarise the distances first of what's going on and, and talk about uh, some ETAs for Ian and um, Jeremy for around the horn. So if we lock that on the horn and we come across here to Ian, even though it's the great circle route, I can make some assumptions here because I, I basically know, you know the approximations and that's all we're after. So great circle route for Ian at the moment to uh, Cape Horn is uh, 2,878 miles. Now, at 100 miles a day, that, that would be um, near enough to 29 days. He's going to go faster than that. And the true distance the way Ian's going to sail from here across the top of the zone and then down is probably going to add another 300 miles or something. So it's about 3,000 miles. So that would be, uh, you know, 30 days from now if it was 100 miles a day. He's going to do better than that. He's going to do, uh, on average, probably 130 miles a day or, or a bit more. So... You know, again, averages is probably about, um, you know, there's probably about 28 days in it, something like that. And that would well and truly cover any sorts of issues. So for now, it's the 18th of uh, February. So there's 10 days left in February. So uh, that'll bring it uh, to another 14 days in. So you can more or less figure on around about the 14th of March. Um, in the middle of March, we should see Ian uh, getting around the horn. And uh, if we then pull back and look at uh, Jeremy's position ahead of Ian, at the moment uh, on the rum line, about 450 miles. So uh, that might extend a bit because <laughs> uh, Jeremy's usually a little bit quicker, but I'd, I'd, let's just use it as a four day. Uh, he's got at least four days in front of him because I think he'll extend that a bit and he'll do more than 100 miles a day. But as a generalization, around about four days ahead. So that would see uh, Jeremy coming around uh, Cape Horn about the 10th of March. And that's not too bad in a timeline, okay? Then the next issues are, uh, you know, these guys, the tail enders, getting up to La Sable de Lone in time for the prize giving. And meetings are being held. In fact, we had our first planning meeting for the arrival of boats into La Sable de Lone uh, yesterday in the office with uh, Natalie and, uh, you know, talking about what the options are. And, and uh, it's going to be sometime late in June. We haven't set the actual date. That'll This is the preliminary one. I'd say the actual date might be announced in the next week or 10 days. Uh, also, because I know there's a lot of people planning to come to La Sable de Lone just to, to see the entrance and be part of what goes on. It'll be an amazing weekend. It was in 2019 when the, the uh, uh, previous edition of the um, 50th anniversary edition of GGR happened. There'll be some really interesting people there. Uh, there's some other plans happening at the same time that I can't talk about yet, but uh, if you've been following La Sable de Lone, you'll know they're involved with a few different things. So... Uh, it's going to be a big weekend, and if you ever wanted to come to La Sable alone for a weekend and, and, and see all the skippers and so on, uh, get the feel for the, the, the GGR up close and personal, that's the weekend to head, head across. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Maybe in 10 days we'll be announcing it. So will they get there in time? Now, that's an interesting point, and uh, you know, some of you may have forgotten this fact. If you remember down here, this is the instant replay button, okay? And I can just, as soon as I start, click on that and drag it back, looks like it happened. Everyone's going backwards, doo -doo -doo -doo, back under New Zealand. And if I come back across here, I'm doing this to work out how long it took Ian Herbert Jones to get to Cape Town. So if I keep going back, okay, so we come back here to Cape Town. And uh, we find, uh, where's Ian? I just come forward a bit. Uh, Ian, there he is, the orange, little orange boat. So he hit Cape Town. And then you look at the date here. So he arrived in Cape Town on the 25th of November. Now that's close enough to three months. Took him about three months generally to get to Cape Town. Now, if we look at, if we look at the course, you know, that you can see going around uh, uh, the island here, and then that's the rum line coming across. They sailed under here. That's about the same distance from about the Falklands. Uh, going back to La Sable de Lone. So you could, let's just say now Cape Town, if all goes well, it looks like it's going to take in about three months to get back to uh, La Sable de Lone. And the ETA that we chose was for Cape Town was about the middle of March. So that's middle of March, April, May, June. So he should arrive on middle of June, which might be a week or so, uh, just in front of the uh, 
just in front of the prize giving. I know he'll want to be there for that. So uh, he's got some challenges ahead and that'll be his next big dream to uh, arrive back in Cape Town in time for the prize giving. It'd be fun to have him there and I'm sure he's going to make it, but it's a new little challenge. Those just to update this again, if I wanted to replay this now, if I, um, if I just hit this little black button there at the end of the, the screen, right? Remember that? So you got another line come up here. Now that's the speed of the replay. So if I want to make the replay go faster, like a video, then I slide this, this little button along here, and that's going to go, I'm going to put it on pretty quick. So you can see what's going on. See the boats are now racing? You know, da -da -da -da, he comes in, he's out of Cape Town, and then uh, there goes Captain Good. Ooh, he got close to the zone there, and who's streaming ahead? No one else but good old Simon in the Howdens, you know? And so you can have a lot of fun with this. Just a reminder, you can replay it. Look, a bunch of little... Oh, well, <laughs> little mice, we'll call them mice. We won't call them sperm. But anyway, uh, racing along, it's a really fun thing to do. And you can, you, I can speed it up faster, right? It's really fast. Da -da -da -da. Or if you want to see some particular detail, you can slow it right down and they're just crawling. And you also get an exact date and time uh, for where they are anywhere along the course. So I'll speed it up a bit. It, it's a really fun thing to do. You know, you can relive any of the moments. And just remembering the uh, summary that we do, uh, so now they're, they're, they're heading across the, the zone here. Good old Matessia cut the zone. It's fun to watch Matessia. He's pretty much sailing where, where we've got the fleet. And, um, you know, it's, it's quite cool. Um, this was, uh, was this guy down here? Yeah, this guy now back in, back in Hobart. And uh, here's Robin now waiting and uh, heading up to Dunedin to wait there. And eventually when you get back to the end here, boom, the, the windy comes up. You don't get the weather. You don't get a weather replay. It's just a course. So um, so that's a bit of fun, and um, uh, you can see uh, that will be the objective now for Ian. They've got something to race for, as well as just uh, trying for fourth place in the GGR when there were 16 starters. Okay, so we'll uh, get rid of that now. We'll talk about the weather. All seems well on board with Ian. You know, he's uh, quite happy doing 3.7 knots at the moment, right across to the 8 o'clock position. He was going a bit faster than that before, but 116 nautical miles in the day. Jeremy's uh, done, uh, here we go, 155 miles, 6.6 .6 knots, uh, all pretty healthy. And uh, I'll push it, I'll leave it there so you can see the weather. Uh, if we go forward a day, um, near enough, Ian's going to get a stronger southerly, but no dramas there. Jeremy's got a good following breeze, he's okay, so we're into the 20th now. Uh, day two, same, uh, Ian's got it, uh, Jeremy's got it on the nose, Ian's still got a subtly, so he'll uh, not like that, he'll probably, yeah he will, he'll go on starboard tack again and probably be heading out to the, uh, heading out to the, uh, heading out to the um, northeast and, uh, you know, enjoying the ride, so, uh, sorry, a bit of a distraction there, um, yeah <laughs> okay uh, okay so that's all looking good for the next couple of days for those guys and uh, uh, no complaints so captain Goog enjoying the ride no doubt uh, he's really um, got a, you know for this part of the world an amazing weather system doing 5.8 knots he's not on the rum line um, there's probably a reason for that I'm not sure maybe it's because of the night day where we got yeah it's night time there and you know once you got the boat happy you usually set up in the morning uh, to uh, actually then alter course a bit which I'm sure he'll, he'll actually do um, so uh, he's uh, yeah 5.8 knots anyway uh, Simon I'll do the weather together in a minute with this one just to uh, pull it through so Simon left uh, late yesterday and he's been fluffing around with this this you know reasonable headwind so he's still making progress 5.5 but if we blow his course up you'll see he still hasn't been able to make much ground but you know in relation but he is getting there so he was anchored up in here he came out came across the close to this island here zipped away tacked away here did wasn't going anywhere now he's going forward a little bit and he knows that the wing is going to wind is going to start to swing so you can see here uh you'll see it start to oh no it's still hang on it's meant to uh okay Okay, so he's going to have, uh, it's not heavy winds, it's probably still about 20 knot head winds, which is not much fun. And uh, that's 24 hours coming up. So yeah, there's there's 24 hours, so he's still got 24 hours of uh, head winds going through to the 20th. That's about the midnight going light. And then, uh, then it's going to come through. So he's still got two days of frustration. Um, it's not unsafe. It'll be a sea state. will be down around three meters, going down to two meters, 
Um, but he's not going to make much progress towards Cape Horn in the next two days. Uh, and then you can see it's starting to swing. So if I zoom out here, you'll see it's, it's part of this. And once it does that, it'll be on his beam. Yes, he's on a lee shore, but uh, it's not an extreme wind there at the moment. He'll be happy to see that because once he's got it, it's down on starboard tack with the wind 90 degrees on the beam. He'll be going quite fast and he'll just be bleeding and happy to be heading back towards um, Cape Horn. And the further south he gets, if you watch this, the further south he gets, the chances are that the wind becomes more favourable. It goes from, you know, the westerly can go to northwest, as you can see here, and he'll scoot around. He's still got a long way to go. His distance um, is, uh, okay, let's bend it, boom. There's uh, 700 miles south, seven, eight, nine. He's got nearly a thousand miles. He'll, he'll do a thousand miles to get to Cape Horn with all this tacking and bits and pieces. So, uh, and that's well and truly over a week. You know, it's a good week going in the right direction. So, uh, we might not see him through until after next weekend. I reckon he'll probably get around. Uh, so that Simon, we didn't look at Googs weather coming through, but before we do that, I'll come back and review it again. Let's talk about Avalish. We'll come back to this. He's pretty happy on board. You know, we haven't heard more about the diesel leak. His tweet this morning was there's sawdust all through the boat and uh, bits and pieces, but um, at least he's going in the right direction and he, and he knows that uh, Cape Horn is imminent because if we, if we pick this up now, you can see uh, his distance to Cape Horn is only, uh, boom, boom. He'll probably come up for a look, 67 miles. He's doing... Uh, 6.8 knots so in probably in the next 10 hours or so 10 or 12 hours it's nine o'clock here in the morning um, so you know seven eight nine uh, nine o'clock tonight this afternoon time he will be around Cape Horn and he'll uh, be very excited about that I can tell you we haven't heard any bad reports about his uh, servo pendulum blade that he's fabricated from the emergency rudder of the boat of uh, uh, bayonet um, so let's keep our fingers crossed that that works all the way back to Lasab de Lone because I figured with the material he had he's probably made at least another copy of the one that he's got now at least one more I think he get two out of that plank uh, I may be wrong maybe he can get more but there's certainly more than one so um, keep your fingers crossed okay so back to everyone and uh, we can look at the weather of Gug and also um, also uh, Abolish going around then we'll talk about Kirsten so, uh, okay, bringing the weather forward slowly, watching Goog mainly, um, it's not gonna be a lot of change. It's a good, you know, good breeze for sailing. It's gonna roll around to the northwest and it's gonna increase. Um, but I looked at this, the maximum forecast wind is not gonna go above 30 knots. So I checked it out on Windy, so we won't be giving him a wind alert. Uh, and it'll give him a push over the next couple of days to get further down. So that's only in one day, that's uh, 18. There's the 19th, he's the 18th, so uh, here we are two days in. Uh, so he's going to be in this general area here, and he won't be in the compression on the coast that brings the extreme winds because it gets a lot more down there at the time. And having said that, Abolish has already gone around the corner, so he'll miss it too. So where you see this wind starting to pick up here, uh, Gug just misses it. He's in here, and even this is only forecast 30, gusting 40 sort of thing. Uh, but it does compress on the coast and start to get quite extreme there. That's where it picks up, but they'll both miss this. Avalish will be around the corner. It'll form in front of Gug, so they're all fine. Uh, another good piece of timing. Someone's looking after Gug, um, and Avalish deserves it. <laughs> so anyway, that's fine. Uh, and then it starts to disappear, and then if we move this forward to see what Gug's going to get, look at that, it's perfect. He can keep pushing through there. There is something coming on the 24th and 25th, uh, but it disappears pretty quickly. So so I don't want to go too far ahead with that. We'll uh, leave that for later. So finally, just coming up to Kirsten, uh, got the big number here, the big sucker, and uh, she's just going to miss it. It's perfect timing. Um, but once again, as I said yesterday, this is still a challenge all the way up to the latitude of Rio. And uh, for Kirsten, she's currently doing uh, 6.1 knots, and she will um, get a little bit of fickle stuff because below it, it's very unstable. If you watch the holes there, there's a bunch of holes, but it's generally in the right direction, but it'll be on again, off again. You know, this is still all confusing, but the big number disappears in the next, uh, basically in the next 36 hours, it's completely gone away from her. And uh, she's pretty much pretty clear for the next few days going north. Uh, so you can see this is a nice breeze. There's a high pressure system here and she's gonna hook on the right side of it there. So there's 20 and she's coming on the bottom edge of it and it's slowly coming across so she might run out of wind if she drives into the middle of it and then she's got some challenges because what we've got here remember our dear friend the south atlantic high this is this can become a challenge now this is a bit of a messy one it's, if we go back you'll see it's quite organized 
we go back to here, here's your, here's your South Atlantic high. Now this, this low pressure system here that's going to move away from it upsets the apple cart, it leaves a big void there, the high the centre of the high rushes across and that's going to leave the rubbish behind for Kirsten. So she misses out on the storm but you can see what she's got coming is not so favourable. It's going to be really messy, maybe some headwinds because this will move across in front of her eventually and she'll be on the back edge of that and that's all headwinds. So it's always a challenge getting up here and you can see Jean-Luc came in, he got pushed right up into the corner here, he got forced up into there literally only just off the coast and then before he could get away and then get into the trade winds which are supposed to be coming up this way so plenty happening and uh, lots going on in the next uh, week uh, 10 days uh, well month well actually a lot going on for the next three months <laughs> so we'll see you uh, uh, see you tomorrow thanks